gone. If you're around my age, you probably have some of these things we're going to be talking about laying around the house. Uh, if you remember not too long ago, I did a video on digitizing slides uh, and, you know, s saving and storing your precious memories in a uh, digital format. So what we're talking about today are these, 8 millimeter tapes. These were the last holdouts from the video era, back when we taped things. Uh, of course, we don't do that anymore. Everything's digital, you know, um, hard storage on SD cards, whatever. But in the old days, we stored things to tape. Now, transferring these from this format into a digital format is not nearly as straightforward as the slides were. We did have require a special device to read the slides and copy the pictures, but in these, you actually have to play the tapes in order to record them, and there's not very many things that play these tapes anymore. The original cameras, these camcorders, uh, had built-in players. That's how you played them back. You played them back um, with the uh, media output, often the RCA ports, those would be the red, white, and yellow circular ports, or an S-Video jack, which is a, a specialty jack. I'll show you that in a minute. And so you, you were designed to play these directly from the video player into the TV. Well, that doesn't give us a very good resource for transferring these tapes. Uh, I've had the ones I have for going on 25 plus years. Uh, and I've been worried for quite some time that something was going to happen to them where I would lose the stuff that's on it. And some of the memories are extremely precious. I just reviewed one the other day as I was getting this stuff set up and, and uh, it, it actually had the moment where um, we revealed to my parents we were having our first child, their first grandson from us. And that is a memory that I don't ever want lost. That is just too valuable. And there's I've got hours and hours and hours of these tapes. I've got 14 of these tapes right now that I can find. Uh, you can send these out to a service, but they cost between $30 and $40 per tape. You also have to send the tapes away, and then they do it and send them back. Well, things get lost, things get broken. When you get these back, you don't know what the quality of it's going to be, and you, you know, it's just the one shot. So I've got 14 tapes here. If I take the minimal price of that, $30, it's going to cost me $420 to have all these tapes transferred. So... I decided I wanted to do this myself and so I started looking into it and looking for 8 millimeter tape players they don't have them then oh by the way the original video camera is long gone you know I, I didn't have one so my options were to buy a, a, a 8 millimeter video player which they do have did I just say they didn't have them they do have but they're like six hundred dollars and you know Okay, uh, that's an investment. So it's it's about one hundred and twenty dollars more than it would cost to actually do do these send these off, right? Uh, the other option is to buy a camera, and that's what I did. I went out and I purchased this Sony Handycam. Now you notice this is a video high eight. You have to be careful because there were three generations of these tapes. There were these original ones, which are the uh, eight, just the standard analog eight millimeters. Then you have the next generation up, which is Hi8, which is what this camera is for. And then you have the next generation, which is Digital 8. Now, the, the cameras through the generations were backwards compatible, for the most part. There are some exceptions. Uh, if you're considering do this, you, doing this, you need to make sure you do your research and make sure you get a camera that is capable of playing your tapes. I'm not going to be responsible for that. But um, probably about 95% of the cameras that are digital 8s can play high 8 and analog 8mm tapes. The high 8s can play high 8 and 8mm, and the 8mm can play the 8mm, but they cannot play the high 8s or the digital 8s. So be careful and know what kind of tapes you have before you invest in a camera. All right, so about this camera, this camera cost me $300. Um, also, you have to have a means of transferring this into a digital signal so that your computer can record it. Now, this is the 
this is the um, output jack. So I had a like a three and a half millimeter output jack, and I had an S video jack on this. So I needed to get an S video cable, and uh, I needed to get a digital analog to digital converter, and I got this from Elgato. Um, Capture analog video for your Mac PC, iPad, or iPhone, and it, as you see, has the S video port on it. So, our task now is to play all of these tapes. And, you know, these are old family things, my son's videos from the time he was two to nine months old. And also, I've got a lot of tapes because I went to the 1996 Olympics and I videoed a lot of that stuff there. I have no idea what's on these. I mean, I have them labeled, I know what they are, but I have no idea. You know what kind of interaction to their family stuff etc so it's, it's gonna be really great to see these things so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn over to my desk I wanted to at least present this initially here on my stand-up desk because it's just more room to maneuver here but uh, we're gonna turn over there we're going to record our process of um, at least getting this started and then I'll show you some of the results afterwards and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how we go. Now, overall, this, so if had I sent these off, it would have cost me about $420. So I bought the camera for $300. I bought the video capture device for $90. So, and, and, and the cable was nominal. So we'll say I spent about $400. So if you want to do this, just know it's not going to be cheap. So you'll have to determine for yourself whether or not it's worth it. For me, it was completely worth it because I cannot afford to lose these memories. And, um, you know, it's $20 cheaper than if I set it off at the cheapest rate and I get to do it myself. And if I don't like it, I can do it again. So I have complete control of the process. And I think for me, there's a lot of peace of mind there. All right, well, let's go adjourn to the, to the, uh, desk where we'll start the next part of this process. All right, so we have the camera connected to the power supply and then the S-Video cable connected to the Elgato digitizer. And then that is connected to my USB strip. Now, one of the things I've discovered is that S-Video only captures video. I need to connect a three and a half millimeter cable from the camera to the red and white RCA inputs for the audio. So I need to buy a new cable so I won't be able to show you the actual output until after I get that, which will be tomorrow or the next day. So I'm ordering that now, but I will at least go through the process right now of getting all, this all connected and, you know, at least starting the recording process so we see that. So we'll do that right now, and then I'll show you the output once I get everything that I'm looking for as far as uh, cabling. All right, here we go. All right, so as you just saw, we have completed making the physical connections here. The next step of this, according to the Elgato instructions, is to go to elgato.com slash downloads and get ready to download the software for this. So there we go. So video capture and download. And we're downloading an MSI here, so. And they wanted to remind us to follow them. All right, so we get a setup wizard we're processing through. We accept the terms without reading them. I tend to install things on my D drive. My C drive is just for my Windows operating system and install. All right, and finish. Pretty simple. Now what? So am I guessing that we now have a something to run here? Okay, so it didn't auto launch anything, so we're launching that. Now there's no lights or any indicators on the capture device to suggest that it's working. Okay, and it says, please connect your Elgato video capture hardware to any USB port. Well, I already have. My other option is to quit, so it doesn't see it. Let's disconnect it and reconnect it. All right, so a quick look at the device manager shows that uh, 
drivers aren't installed for this device, so uh, we'll see if we can find them. Alright, so according to my device manager, it said the driver wasn't installed, so I went out and found the video capture driver. And we're going to run that installer now and see if that doesn't help us any. Next. I'm going to remove the device. And let us reconnect. See what happens. All right, well, I don't see any errors, so let's go ahead and run it again and see what happens. Okay. So this looks much better. Um, there was nothing in the instructions about installing device drivers. Um, I would say the average person who was trying to do this would probably not know to hunt for that. So I would give some feedback to Elgato, maybe give some better instructions. Okay, moving on. This is what the video capture software looks like to start with. This is what it looks like to start with when you kick it off. Uh, we have several options. Getting started, connect video, connect audio, record, trim, finish up. Uh, so, I don't know, let's take a look and see what we got. These tapes are 120 minutes long. I'm going to just say that right off the bat. Um, some preferences. I have a preferred place I store videos. It's definitely not on my C drive. So let me uh, quickly set where my output is. Good. Okay, now I have a destination. High resolution. It's a fast PC. Mine should be okay. Automatically check for updates. Find video. Uh, we can adjust brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. Audio. We can adjust the gain. Those are good things to know. So it looks like we... This process is one movie. All right, so I guess we, uh, we're going to call this um, first movie and say continue. All right, so now I guess we kick off our recording. Now, first thing you want to do is make sure your, your tape is rewound. So we're going to say video input is, R, is S video. Aspect ratio is going to be four to three. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's see what happens. All right, and that is the video, October 27th, 1996. This is some shots of the Blue Angels, so from my front front yard back in, this is when I lived in Jacksonville, Florida. So we'll just use this as our, oh, there's a bird. Okay, continue, connect audio. So as we, as we have noted, we don't have the three and a half millimeter, uh, Cable, I'm ordering that. I'm clicking order right this second for that. So I will have that tomorrow. And we'll finish this section up. But we'll go through and, and go ahead and start recording and see what the output looks like. All right, continue. Record. Automatically stop recording. Mute sound. No. Uh, I assume you're still able to see this, right? Let's move this over here a little bit and start recording. Okay, that little ball went from a red to a sort of an orangey. And it's nice, it's showing you the duration, the amount of storage it's using. So we're gonna let this run for just a couple of minutes. And then we'll go check and see what the output looks like. As you see, it's a four to three ratio. Oh, hi, God. The good news is once this is out in its format, I'll be able to edit it using my uh, video editor. So all this crazy stuff I can I can get out of it. So 
All right. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll probably run these at night because the video has to run the entire hour and 20 minutes. And what I'll probably do is set these to automatically stop recording after an hour and 20 minutes and uh, put these on when I go to bed. Seems reasonable. All right, so the next thing you're going to see is tomorrow, the output of this, and see what it actually looks like. So we'll get back with you tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, it looks like I've got everything in place to make this happen, so I'm pretty excited about that. We'll uh, we'll see what the output. We'll look at. We'll go look at the output of this one right now. Let's go do that. Okay, stop recording. Okay. Uh, let's let's see what's next here. Can you can trim the start and end of your recording here? So it looks like you can modify that. We don't want to do that. And finish up. Movies being processed. And it came out as an MP4, which is exactly the format I prefer. Uh, what would you like to do? Play with Windows Media Player. Why not? And here's what it looks like. Hey, that's not bad for a handheld video camera. All the, I'm getting motion sick from all that. But, uh, it, you know, in the meantime, I'll cut all that out when it comes time. But uh, it looks like this is working pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with it overall. Um, like I said, I'll show you the I'll show you the output for this. Maybe I'll show you some pictures of me from uh, I don't know some 25 odd years ago. Okay, um, I'll see you back here tomorrow. All right, it's been a couple of days. Um, I have had a chance to uh, mess around with the camera some more and work on recording some things and I have just a little bit of feedback to give you as well. First of all, I did go out and purchase the uh, 3.5mm to RCA cable and definitely needed that. Plugged it into the 3.5mm port and b they plugged in both the red and white jacks into the RCA ports for, for the Elgato. Uh, come to find out though when I uh, rec was started recording there was a massively loud buzzing sound and the reason being is this tape only was recorded on one channel you know R RCA the red and white are stereo uh, stereo recordings so on the tape I had one channel of audio and one channel of a loud hum so I simply just unplugged one of the RCA cables and just played the channel with the audio and it was perfectly fine. It's mono. It doesn't matter. Uh, so that's in place and I spent uh, a bit of time recording. Now I did take one of the tapes that's two hours long and I just set it and recorded the whole thing. Um, what I found was that's too much I think for the Elgato to handle. When I did finish processing it, it was kind of jumbled up there were periods where the video was sped up really fast. The audio was mixed up. Uh, so recording for two hours, that's potentially a risk for having the output like I had. What I found was if you can break things up into 20 to 30 minute recordings, works perfectly fine. Um, I found that on most of my tapes, I didn't have much that was over that amount of time anyway. You, typically I would tape something and then shut it off and then tape something else now, after it and whatever. So 20 to 30 minutes works really great. Um, here's an example. Let's uh, let's check it out. Today is Adam's two this is me when I was uh, 33 years old. Jacksonville Zoo to celebrate. Um, As you can tell he's very excited. Yep. There's baby Adam. See you there. About to go on his first outing to the Jacksonville Zoo. And a little bit of talking from Adam. As you can see, these memories, irreplaceable, precious. Most of these I had not seen in 25 years, 24 years, whatever. Typically what we tend to do is tape things and not watch them back. Most of the stuff that was on here, I was shocked at what I've seen, some of this stuff. My 
college roommate's wedding and his um, reception afterwards. So I was a bit surprised at actually what all was there. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So uh, can I say I'm thrilled? Absolutely. Is this worth the money? For me, it is. Uh, each person has to assess themselves whether or not it's worth the investment to, to recover that or have somebody else do it for you. Uh, not very technically challenging, just a little bit with the Elgato instructions as far as the drivers go, but, you know, was able to overcome that pretty quickly. Overall, all I can say is I'm thrilled that I'm doing this. It is such a sense of relief that I am actually recovering this these memories and putting them in a place that's safe. Not only that, I can share them now. So I'll be doing that, not on here. You guys won't care to watch my personal videos. But I can put them on thumb drives and mail them to people, which is what I will be doing. But uh, there you go. Worth the investment to me. It's a lot of peace of mind I'm getting from this. This has been weighing on me for quite some time, and I'm glad to get it off of my, off of my shoulders. And uh, there you go. Transferring video from tape to your computer. Worth it. All right. Everybody, thanks for coming by, and uh, I appreciate it. And for all the new subscribers, I thank you as well. And I guess I'll see you around here next time. Bye now.